So let's start with the wisdom share of Rabia. Wish me good luck. <laughs> I feel like it's really a hard thing to explain about it. I will do my best. So um, those information that we receive about Rabia al Adavia are uh, not 100% trustworthy, actually, because we are uh, reading her biography, not biography, there's not any biography, but we are reading about her stories from people who lived many years after her death which is very common for many saints, actually. But there is something which this information is showing to us. One is that everybody is talking uh, about Rabia as Rabia, not Rabia of Adavia, not Rabia of Basra. They are always referring to her as Rabia. This is showing us that she was a very well-known person. And by saying Rabia, it was enough. And the second thing to take care of, in a, she lived in the sixth century. Uh, she born in 717 and at those times where women was not that respected as uh, well respected as men she was referred again and again and she she was basically like uh, a very important character and this is really incredible looking from this point of view so uh, when we are looking to her childhood we are getting information from Feridun uh, Attar uh, who lived actually 400 years later uh, than Rabia and uh, even from her uh, birth we are receiving information about stories about her and her miracles she born to a very poor family uh, when she born uh, the story says that they even didn't have any oil for their lamp or any uh, fabric to wrap her so the mother asked to uh, his her uh, father to go to a neighbor to ask for some uh, oil lamp and uh, the guy uh, promised that he would never ever ask anything to anybody which was a common spiritual practice uh, at those times so he behaved as he was going but he didn't go and he didn't receive anything uh, so at night he uh, fell asleep uh, very sadly and in his uh, dream he saw prophet muhammad uh, who said to him that uh, your daughter is a very loved one of the god and uh, she will help many people to choose the right path uh, so no worries at all, go to Emir of Bas, the, government, the governor of the city of the Bas, and uh, say him that he's praying, write him a letter saying that uh, he's praying every Thursday and every day for Prophet Muhammad, but last Thursday he forgot, so because of that he needs to have to poor uh, and also you. So he did it, Emir of Bas was just um, completely astonished and he helped he respected the family a lot so we are beginning to hear these stories uh, about her birth uh, just from the start uh, and then after his parents uh, death uh, she become a slave uh, and one day uh, a person approached to her she was very worried and uh, she began to run and she fell down and she hurt her ankle and then she began to uh, pray for God. And she said, oh, my Lord, I'm orphan. I don't have any mother. I don't have any father. And I'm slave, <laughs> as you see. <laughs> but I don't grieve. What I just need is your uh, knowing that you are constant with me. You are blessed with me. And they say that they hear a sound saying that don't grieve. Even the angels will envy you hereafter. And there is another story about her uh, slavery that one day she was praying uh, and while she was praying, her master uh, saw her. There was a light uh, just upon her uh, head, but the light actually was without a uh, chain. It was just flowing on the air. So the master saw and he was really surprised and he didn't sleep all the night. And in the morning he said to Rabia that she's free because she's an important person spiritually. So this is how Rabia got her uh, freedom from slavery. Then uh, some fact about Rabia which is important is she never got married. And uh, this is thanks to her freedom after slavery actually. Uh, because at that time the fathers were deciding with who the person will marry and 
uh, it was not easy, it was not a common situation uh, that women will not marry. So she could decide not to marry at that time, even though she was very famous and many people wanted to get married with her. She was always uh, responding in the same way that I don't have any place in my heart beside God. And uh, at that point, I would love to read you uh, two prayers of uh, Rabia, which is very typical and showing her romanticism, right? Uh, to God. Uh, one night she offered at night upon her roof. She said, oh, my Lord, the stars are shining and the eyes of men are closed and the kings have shut their doors and every lover is along with his beloved and here I am alone with you. And another one she prayed, oh, my Lord, if you, if I worship you from the fear of hell, burn me therein. And if I worship you for the hope of paradise, exclude me therefrom. But if I worship you for your own sake, then never separate me from your eternal beauty. Uh, very, like, very characteristics of uh, Rabi and her love to God and her way of relationship with uh, God, very, uh, very characteristic for her. Uh, and there are many miracles about Rabi. I would love to share with you two of them. Uh, one is, uh, one day two elders are coming to Rabia's house. Uh, they are hungry and they want to eat something. And uh, Rabia is living really an oyster life. She doesn't have anything. Uh, so she just has two bread, which are not fresh. And she's giving this, offering this to elders. Mm, and she's not very happy about it. And suddenly, uh, somebody is on the door and she's opening and there is this beggar yeah, and she takes the bread and she gives this to the beggar and the elders feel a bit offended but they don't say anything and then uh, again another person is knocking on the door and she's opening and then there is a slave and uh, this slave is saying uh, my master send you this bread fresh bread hot bread and she's getting and she's counting them and there are 18 breads there. And she says, these are not mine. Slave says, no, my master sent this to you. She says, no, sir, these are not mine. Then she closed the door. The elders are shocked. They are watching what is going on. Then another time, and she's opening the door, the uh, slave again. She says, okay, uh, this is your breads. And she counts, there are 20 of it. And she says, okay, these are mine. Goodbye. She's closing the door and elders are looking to her like, what is going on here? And she explained, you know what, uh, I wanted to serve you well. And when the beggar came, I gave these two breads uh, to the beggar saying to my Lord, okay, my Lord, you say that if I give you one, you will give me 10. So now I am to make you happy. I'm giving these two. Uh, so please send me 20. So when 18 came, I understood that all these are not mine or there is a problem here. And like, of course, the elders were like, just poor, what is going on here? And uh, again, there is another story of Rabia with Hassan Basra, uh, which there are many stories. They tell that they were very good friends. Actually, we know that they didn't live in, at the same time. But anyway, this is another uh, fact. But one day, Hassan Basra is coming to visit uh, Rabia. Uh, and they are speaking. The conversation is so flowing from heart, very muhabbet. Uh, and they are talking about love to the God and everything. Uh, Rabia need to cook, but she said this conversation is more important, so she's not cooking. At night, they will open, they will break their fast. There is no food, they think so. Suddenly, they are looking and there is this um, food, meat, cooked, just cooked, fresh, hot. They say the best food they have ever eaten. It's very important, this story, because it is kind of showing uh, the lifestyle of Rabia. Like she doesn't ha didn't have anything. She fully trusted to God and God always gave whatever she needed, she exactly needed uh, to her. So after talking about this, I would love to tell a bit about Rabia's Sufi teachings. So uh, those people who wrote about the Sufi uh, teachings, such as uh, Ebu Talib el-Mekki, Kusheri, Ghazali, they referred again and again to Rabia. And another uh, important uh, information here is that we never hear that Rabia has a, a spiritual teacher, actually, which is very weird uh, for those times. There is a writer called Munawi explain this situation in a way. She says that he says there are two groups of people. One uh, who needs somebody to reach 
to God, to the reach to the union with God, uh, such as especially Prophet Muhammad. And then there are other people who does not need anything in order to reach to the union with God. And he says, Rabi and Geylani both uh, are in the, Abdul Qadir Geylani are both in this group. Uh, and who they are talking about? They are talking about Arif, Ashik, Eran, Saints, illuminated people. And they say that we know that the information to these people are coming directly from God. They are not learning. It's not like me. I'm reading and I'm learning about Rabia and I'm here trying to explain you and I'm excited if I will forget to say stuff. They say like the information is just coming to them and it is the true wisdom, which you are feeling again and again in singing all the spiritual songs and learning about Rabia's offerings uh, about uh, Sufi tradition. So uh, then they, there is also another saying uh, that there is as much path as the number of the people who are walking through the path for the illumination, for the union with God. Uh, and still, uh, like um, in Sufi tradition, uh, they try to explain this path in some way. Like, okay, a dervish is uh, deciding, making the intention to reach the union with God and he's uh, starting to a journey. And uh, Sufi uh, teachings uh, try to explain it that he's passing from different steps or doors, if it's okay to say. Uh, so I will just refer to these steps and doors in order to be able to explain uh, Rabia Sufi uh, teaching. And uh, you will, it will be more clear uh, for you when I will uh, refer them. First one is repentance, patience and gratitude. The first, so the uh, der dervish is just on his path and the first uh, stage that he is in is the repentance, gratitude and patience. Uh, there is a story of Rabia about it, and it says that uh, they asked uh, to her if a person really feels sorry uh, about a sin, God accepts his sin, and Rabia says it is the, the way around. If a person, uh, if uh, a person asks for, feels sorry, ask for repentance, it means that God accepted, God already accepted this, already forgive him, so that he is in a situation to, uh, to be sorry. So like, uh, it's really um, mind-blowing for me in a way, because I have been in many situations in my life journey where I felt really sorry for my, for my behaviors. And I was like, not, uh, I was harsh to myself, you know? I was really behaving me harshly. And this perception of her is uh, really mind-blowing for me. Really, she's looking all the concepts from totally another uh, angle, which is incredible. The next step of the uh, dervish is hope and fear. After the repentance, patience, and gratitude, the dervish is coming to hope and fear. For Sufis, uh, hell and paradise are not materialistic words. They are um, the, the situation of not being in union with God. Uh, if you are not in union with God, you are in hell. And if you are in union with God, you are in paradise. And actually, Rabia is the person for the first time who put this in such a way. And uh, it is rumored that Rabia one day is explaining her uh, story, uh, sorry, her dream. Uh, she says, okay, I prayed to God and then I went to sleep. And uh, in my sleep, I saw a dream. And in the dream, there was this big tree. And on the tree, there were fruits, white, yellow, and red fruits. It was a beautiful tree. It were, they were, there were beautiful fruits, uh, like the breasts of the girl. And she says, she said like, oh, they are so beautiful. I will love them to be mine. And a sound said, uh, these are yours. She was, oh, these are mine. She was going around the tree and she, suddenly she realized there are 18 fruits on the ground. And she said, oh, uh, uh, these 18 golden fruits, I will love them to be mine as well. Why they are here? I will love them to be on the tree. And the sound said, actually, they were yours as well. But uh, while you were praying, you just thought if the bread that you were cooking was okay or not, this is why they are on the ground. 
which is explaining in a great way about um, hope and fear and total trust or not. And again, they ask to uh, Rabia, what is the core of her uh, belief? And she said, I have not served God from fear of for hell, for I should be like a, like a wretched hireling. If I did it from fear, nor from love of paradise, for I should be a bad servant if I served for the sake of what was given. But I have served him only for the love of him and desire for him. And again, another story about this path uh, is Rabia one day is walking and there is this teacher explaining to her his students. He's saying like, if you continue to knock the door, one day that door will be open. Never lose your hope, right? And Rabia is, cannot stand anymore. And she says, how long you will continue to say this, that if you knock the door, if you knock the door, if a door all really exists or if it exists, if it is closed. So this is the perception of Rabia about the hope uh, and fear stage of the uh, of the path. The next one uh, is uh, fakr, which is poverty. I'm not sure if it is the uh, correct translation. Uh, ascetism, zuht, oneness, tevhid, and uh, tevekkül, trust. So uh, Hassan Basri is asking to her. Uh, how she discovered the secret. And Rabia is answering, you know of the how, but I know of the howless. And uh, this is in a way explaining the zuh, the fakir, this place of poverty in a way, like it's symbolic in a way, saying that I am all ready to leave the uh, my uh, dark sides or see them and in a way, combine them, unite them in order to unite uh, with God. Uh, and when questioned um, by someone as why she never accepts any help from any person, there are many people who want to help or she doesn't accept. Many people of her friends say, we can ask for help for you. She never accepts. She was living with nothing. And she said like, okay, uh, I can talk to, I can ask to my Lord, who is the owner of everything. And I feel ashamed to ask to my Lord for something. So how I will ask to somebody actually who is not the owner of anything was her perception. Uh, and here uh, it is important to talk about Tevhid, which is the one of the core principles, core um, principles of the Sufi tradition. We say oneness, uh, but actually the Tevhid belief is quite more than oneness. Uh, in Quran, it is they say shirk is totally prohibited. And shirk is, um, in a way, uh, giving a partner, saying that there is a partner, God has partner, like there is another thing creating stuff, which is totally prohibited. So Tawhid is, in a sense, accepting that whatever is happening is from God, whatever appears, disappears, whatever exists or not exists. Like there's absolute, one absolute, there's one unity, there's just one. So it is really important and really incredible topic uh, and really the core, it's not like just God is one, but it's like there is this just one absolute, which is really uh, in a remembrance, bring us to the uh, unity. And once you accept this, this bring us, us to the tevekkül, which is total trust. And uh, that just living and beginning to be this, okay, like the steps, the doors for the dervish to uh, reach to the unity, right? And here uh, there is uh, this nice story of Rabia that she is um, going one day to a pilgrimage to Mecca with her donkey. And uh, suddenly the donkey died with everything on him. Um, and Everybody wants to help to Rabia and very typical of Rabia, she doesn't accept. And she's alone in the desert and they, she begins to talk with his God and he, her God. And she says, okay, this is how you behave to your visitor. The Sultans behave this way to their visitors. I'm coming to see you and I'm your visitor. I am alone in the desert and you are uh, killing my uh, donkey. 
Uh, suddenly the donkey wakes up and continue to uh, its way uh, with all loaded. So again, like showing the trust and the oneness perception of uh, Rabia. And uh, before finishing the wisdom share, um, the last path on this Darvish way is love, ingenuity, which is marifet, love, ashk, uh, and unity. So the love is said is the last stage, which it includes the consent. Um, I'm not sure if it is the correct word, uh, again, like being razo olmak, uh, being pleased, being satisfied, right? and enthusiasm. And it's said that once you are in the stage of love, um, the uh, secrets of life begins to dissolve to you, all the veils disappear. So you begin to see God in everything and you feel the unity with God, which is marifet. And for Sufi, uh, humans are in love and God is the beloved. Uh, and uh, there is this belief that this love situation can be lived in this world uh, time to time, but in hereafter, but in hereafter, we will be able to live it forever. Uh, and about the consent, uh, uh, there is a um, saying that consent being pleased is two-sided. Like one is uh, the human is being pleased from God, and then. God is being pleased from the human, the servant. Then Kusheri says that whenever I am pleased with God, I know that God is pleased with me. So like nothing is outside, really everything is inside, right? And um, although Rabia is not the first person who uh, says that in order to reach unity, uh, love is the crucial thing, she is the one who walked the talk. All her life has been the message of love from start till the end and also she is the person who uh, united the doctrine of the discovery who said that um, once you go with love at the end whatever you see is the whatever you see is god this is the first person uh, who says this who put it this way uh, has been rabia uh, and also she is the first person uh, who is who talked about unrequited love in a way uh, a love for not waiting any reward or for punishment she's the first person who uh, did this at that time so uh, one day in a sufi circle they were talking about uh, what is generosity and one person said yes generosity is uh, giving from your money the other person said it's more than that giving from yourself and rabia said you man folk are wrong and they said okay what women folk you are thinking about this and she said it is love for the sake of it just living lo just loving for the love of it without waiting any uh, reward or punishment and about the consent there is really beautiful uh, story again about rabia and Ta uh, tauri which is close friend of uh, rabia one day tauri says okay what do you think about me how do you find me and she says, you are a very nice person, very good person. If only you would not love that much the uh, world. He says, what do you mean? And he's a person, important person at those times of uh, working in the field of the Hadith. And she says, your work of Hadith is making your ego bigger, your nefs bigger, making you connected to this world. And he knows that she was right. So he says, God satisfied with, with me. He's praying. And Rabia says, aren't you ashamed of asking for the satisfaction of a person who you are not satisfied with? Which is like really again bringing the, the, the thing <laughs> at that time what the person needs, right? Uh, and they are asking uh, what, how a person can be pleased, how a person can give a consent. And she says, whenever the person is giving blessing, uh, being in gratitude for the evil as well as the uh, blessing. And they say, what do you think about Prophet Muhammad? Do you love him? And he say, of course I love him. On the other hand, my heart is so full with God that I don't pay that much attention to the creations of God. And again, in other days, they say, what do you think about Satan? 
And she says, my heart is so full with God, I don't have any place to hate Satan, the devil. And finally, uh, maybe one of my favorite uh, stories about Rabia. Rabia one day is running with fire in one hand and with water in the other. And some saints are asking, what is going on? Where are you going? What does this mean? And she says, I will light fire in the paradise and I will pull water on the hell. And finally, all the veils will disappear. And let's see what will happen after that, if the people will continue to worship their Lord. So this is, in a way, like all her thoughts are like, boom, all mind-blowing for her time and for still, because they are true wisdom. 